Hello everybody and welcome to this introductory video about a new implementation named RUT that creates random air traffic within DCS world. This is the first episode of a short series where I want to give you a general overview of the concepts and functionalities of RUT and how to use it. The following episodes will cover more detailed examples to illustrate the various options. RAT is a known class within the Moose framework, which derives from the Spawn class, and its main purpose is to fill the DCS sandbox with some more life. One important aspect in the design of RAT was to keep it simple and easy to use, even for people who are not so familiar with Lua scripting, but also to be very flexible at the same time. This is a list of the main features of the RUT class. As I said, um, the interface is kept very simple. So for the most basic scenario, you only need two lines of Lua code, which I will show you in a minute. RUT is highly random in the sense that aircraft will be spawned at random airports and each aircraft will get a random route to its destination, which is again a random airport of the map. However, the user can specify certain departure and or destination airports, and I think this will be quite useful in many situations. Both planes and helicopters are supported, where helicopters can also use FARPs and ships as air bases. By default, aircraft are spawned at airports on the ground, but it's also possible to let them spawn in air within predefined zones or above airports. Once aircraft have reached their destination, they will be removed and at the same time a new aircraft is spawned at a different airport with a completely new flight plan. One important feature is that all current DCS maps are supported, so you can use the same script on the Caucasus map, the Nevada map, or the Normandy map. And the script is general, so it should be no problem to use it as well for all future maps that come out, for example, the Strait of Hormuz map, or whatever the ED guys have up their sleeves. One nice to have feature, I think, is that RAT creates an entry in the F10 menu which lets you, for example, spawn new groups on the fly, so during the mission. And you also have access to all the groups which are currently spawned. And for each of the groups, you can set the rules of engagement, the reaction to threats. You can despawn each group individually or place markers of the waypoints on the F10 map. You can also request a status report. This will appear as a message and tell you where the aircraft is heading, how much fuel it has left and so on. So how are the departure and destination airports selected? Well, RAT works with templates. So when you have a blue template, it will be spawned on either blue airports, which are these blue circles here, or um, at neutral airports, which are shown as gray circles. It will not be spawned at airports of the opposite uh, coalition, which are these red circles. So once the aircraft has been spawned at a random departure airport, it has a certain range which depends on the aircraft type. 
and only airports which lie within this circle are valid destinations. The other airports are rejected. And also um, airports of the opposite coalition are rejected because blue planes refuse to land on red airports. So in this case we are left with um, four possible destinations and one of these is picked randomly and then the aircraft will fly there. Once it has reached its destination it will get despawned and then respawned at another valid airport of its coalition or a neutral one. And then the whole process starts anew. Each aircraft gets its own flight plan, but the general flight plan looks like this. There are certain events which can happen and there are certain phases the aircraft can be in. It starts with spawning the aircraft and then there are DCS events which are monitored such as birth or engine start. So after engine start the aircraft will be considered as taxiing until the event takeoff occurs and from that on the aircraft will be in its climb phase. So the climb angle or the climb rate is set to be 1500 feet per minute. So that's a very shallow climb angle. Once the aircraft has reached its cruise altitude it will go into a level flight and the cruise altitude is set to be around flight level 200. So that means 20,000 feet above sea level. That's the altitude most aircraft will travel at, but the actual cruise altitude each aircraft will get a sample from a Gaussian distribution. So if you would spawn 1,000 planes, you see that most aircraft will be traveling at flight level 200 but also other values are possible, but they are less likely the further away you get from this mean value. Once the aircraft has finished its cruise part, it will go into a descent, where the descent angle is around 3.6 degrees. And it will be guided to a holding point, which is a random point 5 to 10 kilometers away from the final destination airport. At this holding point, the aircraft will be assigned a DCS task to orbit there until it gets landing clearance. I implemented a rudimentary ATC queue so that when multiple RAT aircraft arrive at the same airport simultaneously, they will get landing clearance one after the other. So this eases the workload for the DCS ATC a bit. Once an aircraft gets landing clearance, the DCS ATC <clears throat> takes over and the aircraft will be on its uh, final approach until the landing event happens. And from then on, the aircraft will be taxiing to its parking position and after the event engines shut down, <clears throat> the aircraft will be destroyed. At that point, a new aircraft is spawned at a different airport. So, how do you set up your mission now to include RAT? This is essentially a three-step process. First, you define the template group from which the aircraft will be spawned. Here I use a Yak-40 which serves as my guinea pig for testing purposes. It does not matter where on the map you place this template group because it will never really get activated. The second step is to give the group a nice and unique name. I often use something like rat underscore and then the aircraft type. 
but this is left to your imagination. The important point is that you remember the name because this is the information you need in the scripting part. Finally, and this is something I like to forget very often, is that you activate the late activation tick box. And that's already it. Now comes the complicated part about the scripting, which is actually not so very complicated. As I mentioned earlier, you need only two lines of Lua code. <clears throat> In the first line, you define a local variable which equals rat colon new. And this is the constructor and it takes as argument the name of the template group as you have defined it in the mission editor. So this creates a new rat object named yak from which you can spawn your aircraft by simply typing yak colon spawn and then the number of aircraft you want to spawn. So in this case, five aircraft will be spawned on the map and this could, for example, look like this. Well, they get spawned on random airports and fly to random destinations. I'm not showing this here again, <clears throat> but when they have reached their destination, they will be despawned and respawned again at another airport. And that's already it in its most basic version. All right, I think this is a good time for a break. In the following episode, I will show you a few simple examples, in particular how you restrict departure and destination airports, but also some other options which might be handy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.